Hey guys, welcome back to another episode on my channel, Mixed Woodworkings. Today, experiment-wise, I'm going to use some leftover Easter grass. Stick with me and see how this project turns out. I promise you, you don't want to miss the ending. While you're at it, smash that like button if you're enjoying this video. Alright guys, time to add the resin and the Easter grass. I took and shaved the bark off of this maple little crotchwood limb section just to uh, make sure the resin has a better way to uh, bond to the wood. Here I'm just figuring out how to uh, how I want this to be laid out before I start adding the resin and how much Easter grass I might want to use. I ended up mixing up just about seven or about 14 ounces of resin, part A, part B, with the one-to-one -one ratio. It turned out to be about the correct amount that I was looking for. For this project, I decided to uh, use a lime green. But I didn't want to mix it too heavy. I used seven drops of it. I want it still to still be kind of transparent, translucent, so you can see through it. Now I'm going to add to uh, the resin to the bottom part before I add my waste block and the other grass. I want to make sure it was nice and saturated and less chance of air pockets in it. This took a little doing trying to get that grass to pack down and around her to get in the resin, but I managed to do it. She's all hardened up. I got her out of the mold, which it stuck to the mold. I didn't use mold release, but I got a bunch of those buckets for basically pennies per bucket, like 250 of them. So, yeah. I did have this happen again. I don't know if it's air being released out of this wood because it seemed like it happens everywhere close where there's the end of the wood. So it was a big pocket. I used some UV resin and put a little bit of that green tint into it. I got a little bit too much, but a lot of that's probably going to be turned away. And I'm going to turn this back, turn this, turn this in, and then see about hollowing this and maybe putting a more of a tendon in the bottom of this. So, yeah, let's get to turn and see what it looks like. Here I'm just using my uh, carbide round cutter. It seems to be cutting this resin and this uh, end grain of this limb back really nice. Hey guys, if you're enjoying this video, please subscribe, hit the notification, it sure helps this channel grow and get bigger and bigger and better and better, and I can bring you better content. Here I'm using uh, my square carbide cutter to flatten off the bottom and uh, try to flatten off the top a little bit. This cutter sure really helps when it comes to trying to make stuff flat on the bottom.
Here I'm using my 5 8 inch bowl gouge to try and do a little bit of shear scraping just to try to smooth out the piece and take out some of the tool marks. Now it's time to uh, take off the last little bottom nub and I decided to do a mortise instead of a tendon in this project and uh, you'll see I have a little bit of trouble with this mortise. So you've probably seen the last clip. I had this come off the lathe. I should have known better probably than use this chuck and I don't think I made my mortise deep enough. So to fix that problem, I got it mounted back in the chuck. I have the tailstock support in here. I'm gonna use the remaining of this nub to try to cut back a mortise or a tendon on this side, flip it back around and recut this to fit a different set of chuck or a different chuck they have and make it a little bit deeper to hopefully grip this and hold on to it a little bit better. So yeah, that's my game plan so far with that. So let's see if I can get this fixed. Yeah, everybody makes mistakes and has little issues here and there. I think it's important to sometimes uh, show some of those. So that's the reason why I left that clip in there and even did that little slow-mo for you. I hope you enjoyed it. Let's try that again to take off this little nub so I can get my uh, Fostner bits in there and uh, take out most of this uh, waste block that I had in place. While I put it in this truck jaws, I decided to shape the outside of it and make it run true again. I end up leaving this little lip on there I thought it was a kind of cool little feature to the piece. Now I'm using my uh, square carbide cutter again to just uh, take out the rest remaining of this uh, waste block that I had in the middle here. And I'll switch to my uh, round nose cutter here shortly to do the final shaping of the inside.
I ended up sanding this piece from 80 grit all the way up to 500 grit and I did fill in some of the bigger uh, air bubbles with some UV resin. Now it's time to apply the first of the two coats of sanding sealer and get the first look of what this piece is going to look like when it's finished. And as usual, after I do the two coats of uh, sanding sealer, I went and added my coats of shellac. I just love using this stuff. It dries quick and also this makes it easy to bring on a good shine on every piece that I make. Now it's time for my DIY sanding paste. Um, you can look up several videos on how to make this stuff. I know it's, uh, it's not that hard to make. And it sure helps with the fine scratches when you use it. Time to use a little denatured alcohol. Just to wipe off any of the residue left that might be from the sanding paste. And now I'm time to add some Johnson paste wax. And just let it set up until it gets to a dull looking finish on it. And then come back, turn the lathe up to a higher RPM, and just buff it back. I sure appreciate you guys watching this video. And if you did enjoy it, please share with your friends. And uh, I look forward to making many more videos for you. Thanks, guys.